Hello everyone, Jared here, and in today's video we're leaving Zhaoxing and heading for Guilin City. Also, since it's been a while since the last time I showed you where we've been so far on the trip, I thought I'd provide this brief close-up of where we've been in Guizhou province so far, as well as this. A map of all of China highlighting roughly where we've been throughout this entire journey so far. And now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start the video. We've had about as much breakfast as we can take. And now we're gonna go back up and get our stuff and head on to the train station. Here we are at the train station outside of Zhaoxing. It took us maybe 10 minutes to drive here from our hotel inside of Zhaoxing, which our manager set up for us very nicely. So we didn't have to figure out all the logistics of trying to get our luggage back to the train station in time for our train this morning. But I have to say, this station is probably the best looking train station in all of China out of any place we've been to. And I really mean it. There's so much dedicated to the local minority cultures here, which truly makes this railway station stand out compared to the others. You know you've done something right when people want to take photos and videos of something like a train station. But anyways, after looking around for just a moment, we decided it was time to go on into the train station. I must say one of the nice things about being in a rural part of China is that at the train stations you get through the lines very quickly. And we didn't have very long to wait this day. So we got on the high speed rail and proceeded to Guilin. So we are now on our train heading from Zhaoxing to Guilin. And then once we get there, we will go ahead and take a taxi ride to our hotel. But before that, I think I should show you where exactly you put your luggage when you get on one of these trains. If you have large suitcases, you should always bring your suitcases to the back of the car that you're in, behind the seats. And then I sat down, back next to my father, waiting for the train to move. Well, we were hoping to see the village on the train route on our way out of the city, but we're in a tunnel. And we've been in a tunnel since the train ride started, pretty much. And we never got to see the village again. So, it's nor back to our normal China Rail trip, where we're just stay in darkness with glimpses of light like now, before we go back into another tunnel. There we go. Probably two-thirds of this train ride was spent inside the tunnel, unfortunately, but actually, it may not have been such a bad thing compared to what we saw outside at one point, because as we got closer to Guilin City, we noticed that aside from a few moments where there were hills with these tiny trees all over the place, which was a unique sight, there were a whole bunch of smokestacks all over the place that we could see from the tracks. And I believe that this is really a large contributor to why we could just barely see some of the mountains in the background, which are one of the highlights of Guilin. Heck, even once we finally got into the city, we could barely see some of them for a while, because of how much smog there was in the air. I thought this was just going to be a trait of having come here around New Year's in 2007-2008, but it appears this is how it looks all year round which is really unfortunate. And once we finally got into the city via a taxi from the railway station, we actually didn't really want to go outside very much at all because our eyes and throats were burning from all the pollution in the air. This was undoubtedly the city where the pollution really got to us more than anywhere else on the trip. Also, the taxis are the most expensive in China. So most of the time we just sat in our hotel room looking outside the window from here for this first day before realizing that we had to go outside to get something to eat. So we walked a little bit along one of the streets nearby, and one of the shops we passed by happened to be this place. Maybe you'll recognize this popular brand from home. We eventually found this indoor food street and looked around for something that we thought would be good, so we ended up getting this fried rice which also unfortunately turned out to be some of the worst fried rice we'd had in China. I think they might have used gutter oil, as everything else pretty much looked fine from what they used while making this fried rice. But neither of us were happy with what we got, and there were many trips to the bathroom later that evening. So, not a good first day one in Guilin. However, morning of day two in Guilin was another story entirely. When we woke up in the morning, 
right outside of our hotel, we got to see women who were participating in some kind of fan activity, as well as practicing Tai Chi with swords. Not something I really expected to see here. But moving on from there, we went to see our first attraction of the day. If you come to Guilin, right near the water, where the lake is that has the sun and moon pagodas, you'll find that there's also an art museum right near there, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're checking it out and seeing how much has changed in 10 years, because this didn't, I believe, used to be here 10 years ago, or 12 years ago, actually, and now things have moved over from where we remember them, and we're seeing what they have in these exhibits. So, what was it that they had at this little museum, you might wonder? Actually, as it turns out, there's a wide variety of art that almost exclusively features works made via ink pens. Some of the works look cartoony, while others are really impressive and look like elaborate works of art from ancient China. This really long scrolling piece being the highlight of the exhibit. So, if you're interested in seeing these kinds of works, I suppose you'll just have to look for where this is in Guilin yourself. And when you're here, it'll probably take you just about an hour to go through the entire museum. Just finished going through the art museum, and now we're going to go ahead and walk through the park next to the Sun and Moon Pagodas. And even though it was morning, we were really starting to feel the heat and the weather. The heat and humidity are a terrible combination for the summer in Guilin, as is the pollution. You can actually, unlike most areas with a lot of pollution, you can really taste it in the air here. In spite of the weather, we continued walking around the lake in downtown Guilin before coming across this familiar sight, the Sun and Moon Pagodas. These octagonal seven and eight story pagodas actually originate from the Song Dynasty, sometime between 960 and 1279 AD. And luckily, they're among the few remnants of that time period that you can still see in Guilin today. Normally, with better air quality, you'd also be able to tell that there are mountains in the distance right behind these pagodas. But because of how poor the air quality was, you couldn't even see a hint of them. But it was still worth it coming here for recreating an old photo I took the first time I was here, over a decade ago. Apparently, there's a tunnel that takes you from the other side of the lake up into the pagodas, from which you're able to climb up its many floors. However, we didn't really find that while we were walking around the lake looking for it. But I don't think it's too big of a loss because they actually look much better from afar like this than when you're climbing up on top of them. Also, if you get the chance, you should really check them out at night, because they look absolutely stunning when the neon lights placed all over them are turned on at dark. This wasn't the only part of the day where we were going to be seeing lots of water, because soon after that, we continued on a path nearby and found ourselves over next to a major river that goes through the city and this bridge that crosses over. And we happened to notice that there were people swimming here, something that, up until this point, we hadn't seen pretty much anywhere in China. Now, I thought that this was neat that there were people who were swimming here, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, something struck me as a little unsafe. So if they have ships docked all the way up here, by the bridge, what happens when you have people swimming in the river right next to it? Do you have swimmers who are going by? Who knows if they're underwater for just a little too long, if they come up and hit their head on a boat, or if you see little chunks coming out from behind the boat. All joking aside, the way that the water and the plant life in this area looks is among the best that you'll get to see when you're in China. And it looks even better when there's actually a decent air quality outside. Because then you're not only taking pictures of what's in the river, but also of what's behind. So, moving along from there, we decided it was time for us to go ahead and find a place to eat. Well, that's a different name for a shop. Eventually, the place we decided upon was this place, Kali Merch Indian Cuisine. And as you'll find out in a moment, this was not a place that we were going to regret. For our first dinner here in Guilin, we went around a food street and didn't really have the best luck with the food we actually got from there. 
so one thing I decided to do this time was look online, see what places had good reviews, and this was one of the number one rated restaurants in Guilin. And so we're gonna check it out for you and let you know if it's any good. There were a lot of options that we could pick from, and thankfully we didn't have to wait too long for our dishes to arrive either. So we have our chicken jalfresi, and our marcani, I think is what it's called, but it's our lentil dish. Of course, naan to go with, because who doesn't enjoy naan? First things first, I've got to make sure that the naan's good. It basses. And now, I think I'll go ahead and try a bite of the chicken. And see how this is. Good flavor. Not as spicy as I was thinking it would be, but it's definitely good. And now, last but not least, is the lentils. So this one's gonna be a little harder to eat. So I guess what I'm going to do is put it on top of my naan here. Probably would have been easier if I just dipped the naan in there in the first place. Let's go ahead. Also good lentils. Best Indian I've had so far in China. In fact, we ended up liking this Indian food so much that we ended up coming back here the very next day. It's not too often when we go to the same restaurant more than once, particularly when we're supposed to be traveling around trying out new things. But hey, at least we got different dishes the second time. That was a good meal. I needed that one after our uh, failures with food so far in Guilin. That was a very good choice. So if you are in the mood for Indian food, I highly recommend that you go right over here. It's called Kali Indian Cuisine. They gave me a little card. So this is where you probably want to go if you are craving Indian food and you happen to be in Guilin. If you try to find the place on Baidu Maps, just know that it may not get the right location for you, so we had to look for it ourselves. And it just ended up being right across the street from where it was showing on Baidu Maps. So, just make sure to check with your own eyes and you should be able to find it relatively easily. And after we were done eating, we went back out into the major shopping street area, also in the heart of downtown Guilin, where we came across this place. Forest Gump Restaurant? And some stores like this one, Tomato Coco. There are a lot of places that have very strange English translations around here. And just like across the rest of China during this summer, there were a lot of different places that were under construction. Who knows what shops will be here when you decide to come here. We were wandering around these streets for what must have been around an hour before we eventually headed out north towards a major intersection and eventually we arrived at this, a structure known as Xiaoyao Tower, which hadn't been highlighted in any of the tourist attraction websites. It's very easy to access from the street and we decided this time we'd go on up to the top and check out this view of the bridge, the river, and the mountains in the distance. This tower isn't one of the places that's really advertised for tourism in Guilin, but it's definitely one of the places where you get the best view. So it always pays to just go ahead and go off the typical tourist trails and see what you can find whenever you're in any city in China. The air quality thankfully was finally starting to improve, and we were able to see more hints of karst mountains in the distance, which only made this view even better. On a better day, I could have spent an hour or even more just staring out at this site. But it was unfortunately marred by two things. Again, the air pollution, as well as all of these cranes, which were seemingly everywhere across the river. But knowing how quickly things in China are built, they probably won't be here by the time anyone else comes here, and you'll get an even better view than we have. Perhaps you want to make sure that you come to Guilin on a time when it's rather windy, and that way, the pollution will be blown away, and you'll be able to see those mountains far away clearly. The view, however, isn't quite as good when you look the other way, 
as you're looking directly at apartment buildings. Anyways, it wasn't too long after that before we started heading on down these steps and out of the tower, before checking out more of the courtyard below and all of the lanterns that were hanging around the walls. We also noticed that there was this covered pathway nearby and decided to head on down. There were murals of historic sites in the city on the walls, and after that, we were in yet another new old town, with lots of shops and restaurants, as well as lots of people, and something we didn't quite expect, this gigantic wall. And heading on inside, we came to learn that this was actually an old gateway to a palace that used to exist here in Guilin, and parts of it which had been reconstructed. So, we were just going to have to come back here the next day since it was already getting dark and things were being closed down. That's something you can look forward to seeing more of in the next video. Anyways, on our way back out, we noticed and took a brief rest inside of these carriages before eventually deciding to head on back towards our hotel. With shops along the side, blaring out advertisements at deafening volumes. Honestly though, who would want to go into a shop when you have so many speakers placed next to one another that are all making it impossible to hear any sound? That's not going to draw someone like me to those stores. Anyways, that's going to be it for our first video here in Guilin. I hope you'll come back next time for when we explore more of that palace, as well as make a steep climb up one of the mountains in the heart of Guilin City, where at the top we get this fantastic view. Until next time! Thank you again for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. Also, please share this channel with others so we can make the channel grow together as I continue to put out more videos.